welcome to today's High Hood Fireside Chat. My name is Campbell Walsh and I'm the head of Ventures at Venture Crowd and I'm your host for today. Um, along with Johnny Quattro, Johnny's having a few tech issues. Um, hopefully they'll get worked out as we go through. Um, and I'll, I'll introduce him shortly if you don't already know him. We're doing things a little bit different today because Johnny and I both wanted to be here. Usually we don't, we're not um, graced with Johnny's presence. Um, but today we are because um, both Johnny and I are the founders of Pitch Venture Capital and High Hood um, is one of our portfolio companies through our Founders Fund One. So we both wanted to be here to have a chat with um, Cam and we'll talk more about that in a sec. Anyway, thank you for joining for um, today's Venture Talk. Um, for those who, who you don't know, Venture Crowd is a digital investment platform for alternative asset, uh, assets, including venture capital and property. We have over 74,000 members who invested over $310 million and 50 million last year. Um, I think what's important to also note is that Venture Crowd is a purpose-driven business. That means we only work with companies that have purpose at their core. And the way we assess it is by ensuring each company that we have on our platform is addressing one or more of the, uh, of the United Nations sustainable, sustainable development goals, which is why, you bring, why we bring you this topic today. And you might ask, what does hiring travel, travel goods have to do with UN SDGs? Um, we'll get to that in a sec. But to find out more information, Jones website. So we are thrilled to be speaking with um, Cam, who's the founder, Cam Hope, Cameron Hope, who's the founder and CEO of Highhood. I've known Cameron for two years now, would you say, Cameron, since we've since we've made an investment when Highhood was just an idea. At the time, he was working at the CBA, CBA as a small business general manager and he had been there for 17 years, leading teams in sales and service with some great results. One of the reasons why we liked Cam and why we invested in Cam is because he's a natural leader. Um, the, the culture that he builds, the performance that he drives is really important and he did that at Combank. I saw him do it at Combank. Um, he did. He made some impactful project with partners like McKinsey um, in strategy and operation. Now, as the CEO of a startup, he's fully committed to scaling um, the business. Um, alongside me today, now if you give me a second, I'm going to try and see if I can um, promote Johnny to panelist and see if he comes up. Cool. Johnny should be rejoining us as a panelist. Hopefully, while he does that, I'll do I'll do a little bit of a uh, an intro for him. One of one of my founders in Pitch Venture Capital, co-founder. Sorry, uh, that was in two thousand and twenty-one. Um, he's a computer scientist and serial entrepreneur. Founded a, founded a sports company, Q Design, and a music app, Jammin. Was across millions of smartphone users. Um, award-winning apps and partnerships with Apple on the iOS platform. So um, has had an incredible career as an entrepreneur. A little bit about me, also founder of Pitch Venture Capital, uh, guest lecturer at the Sydney uh, Business School in Innovation Entrepreneurship, started a genetics company, um, was director of the University of Melbourne's Accelerator Program, um, and had a startup studio called Pitch Black where we... Um, launched a number of startups and helped a number of startups. One of them um, is the extremely successful Mr. Young. Um, before we jump into talking to Cam, I wanted to talk a little bit about the hiring economy for those of you who don't know it um, and how e-commerce platforms are being leveraged in this space. Um, we all know that the trend towards digitizing platforms isn't going anywhere. You know, we've seen it um, with in, in travel with things like Airbnb, we've seen it in logistics and things like Uber. Um, and now we're just seeing it in other places. And one of them is 
um, hiring. Um, and there's connection between different part of the trips. Airbnb does lodgings. Now we're into activities, um, which make, which gives peace of mind, safety, convenience, and real time business information become real important. Um, a few little stats on this. A survey of 3,000 people in the United States, UK, Canada, Australia, and Singapore found that most respondents favour using digital tools when planning, booking, and participating in vacation activities, including things to do when they get to the destination, rather than have a person help them do it. When it comes to hiring goods, there are so many advantages to tra travellers and well, anyone, it's cheaper, it's better for the environment, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we'll chuck a few links up um, for you to have a, um, have a read and have a look through that yourself. Um, so, Cam, to kick things off, could you please give everyone a brief overview of Hirehood and how it is transforming the landscape of the travel industry? Sure. Thanks, Cam. And, you know, thank you to yourself and Johnny. I think he's sort of in and out there on the panel. I can see him coming in and out and also Venture Crowd for um, you know, hosting tonight. And thank you for those that have jumped on live and those perhaps uh, listening at a more convenient time for themselves. But yeah, so look, High Hood's a few things. Um, you know, number one, we are a marketplace platform for the higher industry. Um, specifically right now focus on holiday items and equipment such as boards, bikes and baby equipment. Um, beyond that, we're also a SaaS platform. So, you know, Cam, you touched on this in the opening and spoke around an industry that needs a little bit more digitization and, you know, through our research before launching the product, um, being on the ground, uh, you know, I love being on the ground and getting out and meeting vendors and operators. It's very evident that, you know, for the most part, it is quite a primitive industry still. There's some uh, wonderful people, operators, but I still see lots of clipboards out there down at the creeks and uh, along the bike paths and websites, uh, just, you know, non-existent booking systems, um, you know, phone here to make your booking, you know, very, very uh, labor intensive, I would say. So, um, yeah, you know, that SaaS platform really designed at helping those operators to manage and list their items, um, their bookings and their payments. And, you know, what do we do for them? So we essentially provide a platform for those operators uh, you know, to list their items, but then in turn provide lead generation. Um, and we do that through a number of ways, but, you know, the two main ways are absolutely a number one, Google search SEO. So when someone's searching an item, uh, you know, one thing that we're really working on and also, you know, not jumping ahead, but what this capital raise for us will go to will be really, you know, ranking us high uh, in terms of SEO. And secondly, and this one's crept up on me organically, but it's wonderful, is our partnerships with our accommodation providers. And I'll get to some of those numbers, but I'm talking about, you know, Airbnbs, um, resorts, caravan parks, people who are naturally coming to us saying, hey, can we have your QR code to put in our house or our resort so our guests can have that one-stop shop for all their holiday item needs. Um, yeah, that's probably the overview there, Can You touched on a few things that I'd say we also are. We're very much part of the circular economy. So we, we hit the environmental uh, benefits um, uh, sort of section really well and, um, you know, allowing people to try before they buy and also preventing once-off use for certain items. Uh, the second thing we do in, in that sort of scene is, you know, socially, we, uh, we connect people. And I can give some examples as we go through um, the session today, but where I've seen some really wonderful connections for travelers and uh, accommodation providers or um, you know, operators in the hire industry. Love it, love it. I'm gonna put my um, hire hood hat on. Lovely. I've got to put that on from the very start, I'm a big fan. Um, so what you're saying, I, lo I love, I love um, caravan parks, take the kids there, set up the tent. Um, if I go there, you've got partnerships with caravan parks throughout southeast Queensland, northern New South Wales, where I can scan a QR code, didn't bring my surfboard, but I want to go have a surf, I can get one delivered to me. That's the idea. And, 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 and what else? And I think, um, you know, 
the idea for Hirehood and how that came about, um, Cam, was very much based on what you just described and probably two key things for me about how I came up with the idea. You know, firstly, I was fortunate enough to travel when I was younger. And um, I remember this particular occasion, you know, I was a backpacker, um, you know, B, BC, I call it, before children. Um, in, I was in London and I was waiting for a mate um, near Bank Station. He was a banker um, in the financial district and it started raining as it does in London. And I, and I got me thinking, um, how, what's an easy way for me to get an umbrella right now? Like on my phone, I'm sitting here. How can I easily access an umbrella rather than going to a convenience store who's probably now charging 30 pounds for the umbrella because it's raining? Um, so that really, that's where the idea for me really started. And you know, whilst that might be down the peer-to-peer -peer stage, it got me thinking around, there's got to be a more convenient way to hire items. And then I started reflecting myself and you know, that scenario you just described there. And um, you know, I'd think back to when I was a child and we used to go on the, uh, geez, it was a long trip, but from Wagga to Coffs Harbour, you know, 1989 Mitsubishi Magna and watching dad play Tetris with all our items. And, you know, thinking back about, geez, there must've been some things that got left behind on the family holiday. But now as a father of three myself, thinking, how can I make this easier for people? And, you know, for us, you know, our poor dog um, misses out, the golf clubs miss out because there's just simply not enough space. But, you know, are there items there that we could leave behind, whether it's in the car or even flying, because that's also expensive, the oversized luggage, making it more convenient for people to have a one-stop shop so they're not going to multiple locations, doing multiple bookings uh, for those holiday needs. Cool. Um, since, since its inception, obviously you've achieved a number of great milestones. Could you tell us some of those things that you've, you've achieved so far? Yeah, sure. And I think it's important to remember we are an early stage startup still. And this is why it's a wonderful opportunity for investors to get on board at the, you know, the price and the valuation that we're, we've got here. So uh, in saying that, we've, we've been quite blown away. And, um, you know, since launch around sort of August, September, when we really got our, um, you know, post MVP product on the market, we've had 150 uh, hires go through our platform. So again, ranging from, uh, you know, uh, bikes, boards, baby equipment, you know, prams, porticots, uh, snooze in Byron Bay have been a big one lately. Um, we are based out of four, what I would say, four of the key holiday locations in Australia. I don't want to upset people by saying that, but we've got uh, Byron Bay, the Tweed Coast, places like Cabarita and Kingscliff, the Gold Coast. And just from last week, we've entered into Noosa as well with a number of local uh, operators. Um, we have about 40 operators on our platform in those uh, four locations. And again, a broad range of items. So everything that uh, someone or a user would need on their holiday. You know, I mentioned, I touched on the accommodation uh, providers before. So they are a lead generation that, you know, if I'm honest, when I started Hirehood, I didn't think about that. I was just thinking, oh, people go on Google, they'll type in, you know, bike hire or board hire, and we'll need to rank high to get them to come onto our platform. But we have about 350 now to 400 uh, Airbnbs alone that we're wearing on their welcome um, pack or their digital compendium and with our QR code. Now, that's gone up since our EOI for Venture Crowd launched even um, just recently, given that we've moved into Noosa. Um, you know, in terms of items, well, I meant we were 40 operators on there, about 400 items just in those locations. And, you know, our goal is to really maximise these four holiday spots uh, before we scale, and we do have a big vision to scale uh, nationally, we estimate that there's around 10,000 holiday higher item operators or businesses in Australia alone. And you take that you know, globally, which again, we've got strong ambitions to get it right here in Australia first and take our product overseas. That number's around 1.26 million just in the holiday um, item equipment market. So, um, my goal isn't to stop at holiday items, but for us in Highwood, it's a great place to start. You think about some of the other areas that that could translate into with, you know, with tools, uh, with services like babysitting, massage, you know, you name it, anything higher. We want people to think of Highwood as a household name. Love that. Love that. So shifting gears uh, a little, Highwood's currently taking in expressions of interest for their capital raise. Could you give us a little bit of detail about the raise 
Um, do you have a lead investor? What's the targeted amount? Um, what what opportunity does this round present for potential investors? Yeah, sure. Well, as you as you know, you know, um, Pitch Capital um, was was the first investor on, and that really got me uh, going and got Highwood going. We're now into our um, next raise, and we're looking to raise uh, five hundred thousand dollars. We have a lead investor already with two hundred thousand secured through private investment. Um, so. You know, there's an additional 300,000 remaining. Our expression of interest is going very strong. I'm very happy with um, you know, what I see from what's already come through. And uh, I think you'll be hearing from myself and the team adventure crowd as of you know, from next week um, around um, you know, making that when that goes live. Uh, we've got a share price of $4.53 for the raise. Minimum investment is $500,000 and it's open to you know, all Australian uh, investors. Uh, who are over 18 years of age. I'll just jump in with that. Minimum investment is $500, not $500,000. Sorry, that's the total <laughs> raise. Yep, thank total you. Total raise, but uh, no, just to, just to clarify. I'm that was slipped up there. Thank you for that. Good on you. <laughs> that would be nice though, wouldn't um, it? <laughs> easy to do, easy to do. Um, thank you. Excellent. So we're looking, so 500000 total, 200 k secured, further 300 Okay, we're really strong um, expression of interest. And so the, the deal will be open um, next week to start taking capital. Um, so money's in the bank. Let's, let's flip forward a bit for, you know, for an investor. Money's in the bank. Outline what are the primary areas and initiatives where the money's going to be used for and, and how do you see the, the capital, you know, fueling high risk growth and innovation? Yeah, thanks. Sure. Um, three key areas. So number one, onboarding. And um, I'm a big fan of doing the non-scalable things, particularly at the stage where we're at. So having people on the ground to make a seamless onboarding for three areas, our vendors first and foremost, uh, you know, so getting operators on there, getting their items on the platform, having them listed, you know, the right price, the right descriptions, that's going to help with SEO. Um, secondly, the users. So when we get new customers on board, making sure that it's seamless for them, their sign-up process. Um, do they know what, you know, reminding them when their booking's coming through? Is there any other items that they might need whilst they're on holidays? And, um, you know, that's, that's a big thing for our, what our platform is about is uh, the cross-seller opportunity as well. So someone might come for a surfboard, but whilst they're there, they might hire an e-bike. And I've got some wonderful stories if we've got time to share about that. So, yeah, onboarding vendors, onboarding users, onboarding accommodation providers. So really, you know, we, we want that lead generation coming from them and, you know, them being our best friends, you know, so when someone comes and stays that they think of us first, if their customer is after a particular item, um, Camplify, HipCamp, those sort of companies in the, um, you know, circular economy world, the marketplace world, so I should say not, yeah, the marketplace world, they do that very well, um, that onboarding. And um, I've had, I guess, experience with that. So I love that. I love doing that. Uh, so yeah, onboarding, number one. Number two, marketing and branding. Um, you know, continuing to work on our content, looking for more ways that we can partner with, you know, different tourism um, groups across Australia to really help put us on the map. Um, and then thirdly, our SEO. So really getting that right. So we rank high in, um, you know, the optimization of the, the search engines. Um, to be able to provide those lead generation and, and deliver on what we promise to our vendors. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. I, I really want to take you up on your on your t telling some stories about sure. um, you know current use cases that you've seen, like real world use cases that you've yeah, seen, absolutely. both from a both from a traveler perspective and and a, and a vendor and some of the benefits that they've got out of it and maybe some unexpected benefits that you didn't expect. No, sure. Look, I might give you an example of um, environmental. I'll give you a social example. And then I'll give you a, you know, why would a vendor want to be on our platform? What's the benefit to them versus just having their own website? So um, I can't remember what I said I was going to start with. I think it was environmental. So just recently, um, someone had a, a mother uh, who was real and mother and father, but they're really struggling with their 12 week old what was sleeping. Now they could have gone out and buy these snooze. So a snoo is like an electric bassinet that um, look, we, we had them for one of our children. Awesome. Uh, most people have that feedback, but it doesn't work for everyone. 
So instead of going out and making a purchase and you think about the cost of um, you know, making a SNU, um, getting it delivered, uh, the materials that go into it, then the disposing of it in landfill down the track, this uh, particular person hired a SNU. So they were able to try before they buy first. Now, thankfully for them, the baby loved it and they did go and buy one, but you can imagine the, the flip side of it, uh, they went and bought one and it didn't work, just a complete waste. Um, so environmentally, I, probably some other examples there in the interest of time, I'll go to socially. Um, we've had um, stories where people come on holidays. This particular story was a couple from Melbourne with their children who came up to uh, Kingscliff and was hiring a pram now the local operator was able to drop the pram off, but also able to recommend a babysitter, um, their favorite restaurant. And you talk about like local communities and um, small businesses helping each other out. So, you know, had that social interaction not taken place with the handing over of the item, um, you know, a small business may not have got a, a booking at the restaurant there. The babysitter may not have got a job, um, you know, cause they've got that trust, they've met someone else. This person lives here. They're recommending this person. We can trust that babysitter. So, you know, socially, there's lots of great examples. And um, thirdly, you know, why would a vendor jump on our platform? So uh, what's the benefit to them? It, it, we do lead generation. And uh, what I see happen and what I've seen happen early is that often someone will hire an item, a bit like when you go to Bunnings, probably Cam, and certainly when I go to Bunnings, but you walk out with something you didn't intend on, on going for. Uh, a recent one, again, snooze have been very popular, particularly down in Byron Bay. Um, a couple hide out a snoo uh, and they were staying with their friends in the Byron hinterland. And off the back of that, they were recommended nearby to take on the Northern Rivers Rail Trail, which is a really popular cycling track uh, in the Tweed between the Woolambar and Crabs Creek. Now, an e-bike company got a you know, six or $700 hire for four e-bikes and, um, you know, the the chariots that they tow along in the back, off the back of that customer hiring a snoo. And they've seen this item on the website on our platform. So you know, financially, I guess, uh, that's another really wonderful benefit for um, the operators to be on there because we can do that cross-sell by creating a one-stop shop. Cool, love it, love it. Got a couple more questions for you, Cam. What are the what are the long term? I know you touched on it before, but I'd like to elaborate on a little bit more the long term strategic ob objectives for Hybrid. How do you see the platform evolving? Because there's like what you do now versus what do you do in a year or two years or three years? Yep. And and what what how do you see the future of travel changing? You know, based upon as as Hybrid evolves and this gets this type of stuff gets up uh, taken up more. Yeah, sure. I mean, we've we've got a go to market strategy. We've we've got a you know we've got a six seven year plan you know to get this company to turning over you know, ten million dollars revenue a year. And again, we're at early stages, so we're not getting too far ahead of ourselves. But we have got some I'm going to say ambitious but absolutely achievable goals. You know, year on year to grow our number of users, grow our number of hire shops, um, invest the money wisely in each particular. Um, you know, stage as well in the business cycle. Um, yeah, making sure that when we do get the, the capital injection that we are, you know, we're, we're updating our tech as required um, and, and based on user feedback, um, really, you know, use, doing that wisely and um, our onboarding team to make sure that we are hitting our goals in terms of, okay, number of items and products and, and not just get them on the platform, but make sure that we are generating enough leads to them. Um, and that, um, yeah, at, at every given point in time that we're taking on the feedback uh, from, our, from our users on both sides of the marketplace. Um, growing our partnerships. So I'm, I've mentioned, you know, I see Hivewood as a really good opportunity to partner long-term with some big names in the industry, particularly in the accommodation world. Uh, given I've already got 350 to 400 you know, Airbnbs that are referring business our way already organically, uh, I think there's a massive opportunity there, potentially with airlines as well, you know, reducing luggage, reducing weight on planes, um, those sorts of things. So partnerships, um, getting our QR codes out to more hotels and resorts from a lead generation that way. Uh, you know, that's just, these are all local things. And what I love about... Um, 
what we do and it's not rocket science, but the execution is critical, but we can plug and play what we're doing. So we go out and get uh, operators on our platform. We, we get a suite of products that could be a one-stop shop. Then we go to the accommodation providers and we get them referring business and you know, we update our SEO for the location. We, we can do that anywhere in the world. And that absolutely is the plan um, to take, take it overseas once we've nailed it here in Australia. Cool. cool. And I'm, I'm, this, I'm going to sort of put you on the spot a little bit here and, and maybe you, you'll be able to do it off the top of your head. I'm sure you will. But, you know, something like this isn't new, right? You came up with it in and of yourself, but as most ideas that humans have, you, you then Google them and look them around, look around and somebody else has, has gone and done it. Can you give us a bit of an insight? Some, some, what's, what's going on with this stuff overseas and, and how that's taking off and, and even some of the exits that have happened, if you know some of them off the top of your head? Yeah, no, I can talk about that. I, I can talk about rough numbers too. Obviously, exchange rates change, so um, I can tell you the figures at the time, but... There's a f- we won't quote you on any of them, but it just just no, sure. around the market. Yeah, no, sure. I think it's important for investors to know, you know, the potential for growth here and, um, you know, the exit numbers, I guess, for some of these companies. But look, we are absolutely focused on supporting small businesses right now. Um, and the reason I say that is there is enough people that are hiring and doing the behavior that we at Hirehood need in terms of operators before even considering going peer to peer. Um, all I've spoken about today is operators who are doing the behavior already, hiring out bikes, hiring out prams, you know, snooze, whatever, surfboards, sups. Um, there's enough in Australia right now that we would love to have on our platform before we even consider looking at peer-to-peer. And I think first and foremost, it's really important to, to support small business in Australia, given um, you know, the size of it and what it does for our economy. Um, that's not to say we'll never go down the peer-to-peer route, but the local operators also, they have insurance for the most part, waivers, you know, legally for us having them on our platform, it is a safer um, option um, and less risk. Look, get to your question overseas. Um, I'm familiar with a few overseas. So uh, there is a UK company called Fat Llama, who is purely peer-to-peer. Now they got bought out by a Swedish company about two years ago called Higlo, Higlo, I think it was, for about... I think it's about the equivalent of 70 to 80 million Aussie dollars. Now, again, they were just peer to peer. Um, so that sort of gives you an indication of, you know, the industry. Um, Amer- in the US, there's some companies as well. I'm not sure about the takeovers, but certainly some, you know, household names in the peer to peer. But in terms of getting, you know, operators on, um, you know, in Australia, we want to be, we want to be a household name worldwide for right now, holiday items. But beyond that, anything higher, um, anything to do with the higher industry, uh, we want people to come to us. Cool, cool. Um, now, I'm going to ask you one more question, but before I do, just um, after, after this question, it's going to be open to the audience. If there's any, any questions, so feel free to type in them. I'll read them out to Cam um, if there is. If there's none, um, we'll wrap it up. But final question, how is the world a better place Thanks to high hood. Yeah, uh, you know, I've touched on a few of these and I'll summarise them and then I'm going to ask you a question, Cam. I know everyone okay. gets annoyed when I answer or they get uh, questioned <laughs> after asking a question, but, you know, first of all, making travel more convenient. You know, I spoke about that, you know, particularly young families who have lots of items, um, you know, domestically or internationally, giving them the ability to a one-stop shop, few clicks of a button, hire all the items you need, have them delivered by the operator or pick them up, whatever you choose. Um, those options are, are there on our site. Two, you know, I spoke about the environmental benefits, um, you know, reducing the cost to make items, transport items, package items, um, remove items, put them to landfill when they're past their use by date. And then the social connections as well. So connecting travellers with local hire operators and multiple, you know, more than just the one. I'm going to ask you a question. So, you know, how is higher, how is the world a better place with Hirehood? And, you know, I'll ask you this, Cam. I know you've recently moved uh, up north to Noosa. So, you know, you might be out at a restaurant there in Hastings Parade, I think it is. Hastings, Great, Hastings, Hastings Street. Street, sorry. Yeah. Uh, let's say you had a few drinks. What would you do to get home? What would your action be or as a 
user, what would you do to get yourself back home? Uber, if I could figure out using my phone or stumble yep. if I could. Yep, <laughs> that's the answer I get for most. What about if you're going to take the family on a holiday, whether you know interstate or overseas, where would you go to book accommodation? Yeah, Airbnb, booking.com, one of the two. Yep, yeah, the two I get as well. What about if you wanted to, when you're on that holiday, hire an e-bike or a paddleboard, what would you do? Wouldn't know where to go, except yeah. if I was in southeast Queensland. There you go. So that's what we want High Hood to be. We want High Hood to be how we're going to change the world. We want everyone to go, when you want to hire something, you go to High Hood. We want to make it easy for people. Cool. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Love it. And I can definitely, and that's, you know, that's essentially why Johnny and I invested, um, seeing that vision and, and feeling that you as a founder, you know, if anyone could, could help achieve that vision. So thank you so much for... Um, for the time that you've taken to to be with us today, for what you're doing into um, into into high hood, um, I'm going to wrap it up now. But thank you to everyone who attended. Hope you found the webinar helpful. Um, I'd like you to refer you back to the website if you if you uh, wish to make an investment in high hood. As I said, currently taking LIs. Um, uh, for 500k, we're kicking it off with a um, uh, a lead investor. So uh, as we're trying to trying to raise the 500k, we're already at 40%. Um, another 300k to go. Um, we'll be sending you and anybody else who's expressed interest a copy of the webinar. Um, and feel free to post any questions on the deal page or give us a call at Venture Crowd on 1300 039 655. I um, hope you have a great evening. Thank you to everyone. Thanks, everyone.